Well, traders, I'm going to finish this day um, very much in green, as you can see here. I've got uh, four trades. If you include the $50 profit in WBA, then I've got four out of four green trades. And of course, the biggest winner for me today is Tesla. And that's the only one I want to discuss. And um, not necessarily because it's my biggest winner, but um, because I think there's something to learn from uh, my Tesla trade today. So let's talk a little bit about Tesla. You know, when I um, pre-market time, when I posted my long short list, Tesla was on my long list. But let me tell you something. Before I posted my list, I had Tesla on both long and short. I actually wrote it down on both sides, long and short. But then I thought, well, if I'm going to post this, people are going to get confused. They will not understand why I'm posting the Tesla for long and short. So I ended up just writing it on the long side. But when trading session began today, I did explain that I was looking for both long and short in Tesla today. And um, just, uh, but you know, if, if I go long or short, it has to do with what actually happens in the stock. So let's discuss a little bit what happened in the stock. So Tesla started with a big gap up today. I believe it was like 12% or so. And of course, uh, you know, Tesla is being accepted uh, to the uh, S&P 500 at least finally. It's uh, of course one of the biggest there. I think it's uh, uh, in the biggest top 5% of the S&P 500 companies right now, market value third. 340 billion dollars if I'm not mistaken uh, just to under th that you understand uh, why does it matter I mean wh why would Tesla move higher uh, or any stock would move higher when it is accepted to the S&P 500 well the reason for that is quite uh, simple when a stock is accepted to the S&P 500 uh, there's uh, several of uh, funds which are in fact forced to buy it you know uh, the thing is with um, the thing is with, uh, hold on just a second. Okay. The thing is with stocks which uh, join the S&P 500 is that uh, there's a lot of funds who specialize in buying stocks which are only S&P 500 stocks. Uh, so if a stock, uh, um, um, so if a stock is, 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 is joining, uh, the group, then there's a lot of uh, hedge funds or funds which are kind of forced to buy it because uh, they, 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 they declare to their customers the fact that they're only going to, to, uh, to invest in S&P 500 stocks. And if a stock is joining, then they kind of forced to buy it. So they're not going to go buying uh, Tesla immediately when it joins the group. They, they will just, uh, you know... Um, slowly but surely buy it. So it's kind of promising that Tesla is likely uh, to move higher and therefore it spikes up today. So that's kind of the reason why it spiked up today. But then the question is what comes next? And what comes next is two potential big moves. First, the one I was sure about is that Tesla would come down under the lows after trying to move higher. But I was looking and, and, and I was looking for both directions. I was looking for a spike up which should have came if I would, if I was to go long, right after it gapped up. So usually you would expect a gap up, a move down, not a big move down, it, it moved down too much, and then a big spike over the highs. That's the one I would go long, definitely would go long. But it started with a big, big gap up, it came down a bit too much to my, I mean... No, too much for me to like uh, to go long and then when it started to go higher I was expecting it to fail when it proved to me it wants to fail I shorted it that looked like the right place to short it I failed it went over this uh, resistance point over here and I moved out I had a loser and then I was waiting for the real failure and I was still promising you guys that we're gonna see Tesla under the lows today and we did see it under the lows and, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I stood to my promise because it did move down, but I was definitely looking for a failure. And then it started to slowly come down from the highs. You know, 
when a stock is coming down from the highs, it usually is, with an uptrend, it usually is just a pullback and a continuation. But now you need to take a look at these two green candles. We discussed that in real time. When you see these two green candles here, uh, the first one, Tesla trying to move higher, failing. Second one, Tesla trying to move higher, failing. I posted my short under 456 which was right under this consolidation area over here. And then 45650 actually. Initially it was 456. Then I changed it to 4560 because I noticed that this would be the low of this um, green candles here. So when it failed to move higher for the second time and then came down, and since I was expecting Tesla to come down under the lows, and again, a big gap up, profit taking. Uh, I don't know what's coming next tomorrow, but I do expect that today it will move under the lows. I did expect and it did come down under the lows. Now, once it started proving to me that it wants to come down, I added. Added once here, added second time here. That the point here, 452.50, was the point where I, I, you know, I mean, if you just take a look at the way it came down, you know, the first one was uh, extremely dangerous. Then I added, I believe it was under 455 or so or 454, I'm not sure. So there was a point here where I added. Uh, it did bounce up a little bit. Uh, I was a little bit worried. But you know, when it came down that much from the highs, I was pretty much sure it's going to continue down. And then it bounced up a little bit and came down once more. Now, 45250, if you take a look at that point where I added my last quantity here, so I added twice, if I remember correctly, as it went down. So if you take a look at 45250, which is very, very close to the lows, um, two points or a bit less to the lows, at that point, that was the point of no return. Now, of course, it can return. Of course, it can uh, move over the highs. And, you know, I could have a, a very unpleasant loser after adding twice. But the thing is with Tesla is any stock, when it looks like that and it's proving to you that it's trending lower once, twice, Basically, I was, I mean, before it made this uh, uh, nice downtrend and two upside failures here, I was expecting it to come down. Then after these two failures, when it continues to come down and then it comes down very close to the lows, it's, I, I would like to say impossible, but it's probably almost impossible for stock not to break down on the lows. So the only question is how far? Well, it came far enough for me to gain $64,000. In fact, I had an $8,000 loser earlier. And uh, that uh, that means that I was actually making a little bit more than $70,000 on the second trade because my first trade was an $8,000 uh, loser also. I'm not sure I remember correctly. But anyway, it came down very, very nicely and um, very big winner. I really like the fact that I added twice. I trusted it to come down. Usually when stock starts with such a big gap up, especially stock like Tesla, it's likely to come down. So, you know, it starts with the preparation, the pre-market preparation. It starts with understanding what usually happens in this kind of uh, um, scenarios. And it continues by putting my money where my mouth is. <laughs> That's it. And uh, in fact, three times as it came down and I was adding. So end result is a fantastic trade in Tesla and a great uh, trading session for me and I hope for you too. Well, in fact, we've seen earlier that uh, uh, we had, uh, what, 85% uh, of you guys in green today. We are very proud of this. I mean, I'm very proud and I'm sure that the rest of the analysts are extremely proud that uh, most of you guys, the vast majority, um, is making money. That's absolutely amazing. That's great news. I'll see you all, uh, well, not tomorrow, I'm flying to Berlin. So I'll see you all the next uh, day. Um, and uh, just enjoy this day and uh, see you all in two days. Bye, traders.